Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. A lot of you have been writing to me asking me to create exclusive end-to-end -end simplest tutorial you on Angular with NGRX. So here I am with the full tutorial series for absolute beginners. I'm going to walk you through each step of how you can use NGRX in Angular applications. There are a lot of misconceptions, there are a lot of uh, preset mindset that uh, using NGRX store along with Angular is pretty complicated, it's tough, it's not and that's why this tutorial series, I'm going to make sure that at the end of this particular series, uh, I'm planning around 12 parts on this series. So at the end of that, you will be comfortable mastering NGRX with Angular. This is part one, today we do the introduction. All right, a quick note, um, I'm sure that you are here, that means that you have some experience working with Angular, all right? But a quick note on Angular, what is Angular? Angular is a popular TypeScript based front-end framework developed by Google. It's used for building modern single page applications. It's uh, it's component based architecture with, which supports uh, all the built-in uh, libraries that you need like uh, forms, HTTP, routing, standalone components, services, directives, templates, pipes, routing, modules and much much more. It also offers strong tooling and dependency injection and RxJS for reactive programming. Now let's talk about NGRX. What is NGRX? NGRX is a reactive state management library for Angular inspired by Redux. Redux is what uh, you use with React applications. Now what do we mean by state management? State management means during the course of the application, you would be able to know that particular state, that means what's happening in your application at that given point of time. That's called state management. NGRX underneath uses RxJS, which follows the unidirectional data flow model. Now, when you talk about NGRX, I want you to remember five words, okay? Actions, reducers, store, effects, and selectors, okay? What are each one of this? I will show in each one episode. I'll break it down to most simplest, easiest way for you to understand, implement, and start writing them, okay? But for now, as part of this tutorial, I want you to know two things. NGRX is a reactive state management library for Angular. That's number one. Number two, there are five building blocks of NGRX. Actions, reducers, store, effects, and selectors. Keep this in mind because as we progress in this series, we will start using each one and start building them. Now, NGRX provides predictable state management for complex applications. All right. <clears throat> Before we actually start coding, right? Uh, there are a lot of questions that you have written to me in emails and comments. So this is my attempt to give you an overview of it. Why do we even use NGRX with Angular? NGRX helps in managing the shared state across components efficiently. In a complex application and enterprise-based applications uh, at large uh, companies, they'll have multiple components, okay? When I say multiple, I'm talking about say in two digits or three digits. Sharing the state, that means sharing data between these components at any given point of time during that particular application level is what NGRX comes handy. It avoids a property drilling, which is like you pass one component to, from parent to child to ch sub-child and so on and so forth. Instead, we can get the data from the store directly. It's tightly coupled services that, you know, you can avoid uh, property drilling and tightly coupled services. It facilitates better debugging and testing with time travel debugging, okay? We, I'll show you the dev tools that we have to use and how you can go back in time to check what values you had, what data you had. It centralizes logic for uploading, updating, and deleting data. So it's one store from where you're fetching data, you're adding, you're deleting, you're modifying. What are some of the advantages of using NGRX with Angular? It's a predictable state management, which means that the store will be the single source of truth for your application. 
it decouples business logic from UI that means you have a cleaner more scalable more performance oriented architecture it improves testability that means once you have actions reducer and effects these are smaller pieces which can be easily tested it's reactive and scalable which means you can handle complex async operations elegantly with rxjs dev tool support you can always i'll show you that how to inspect how to use the dev tools in order to go back in time for debugging and action logging it's great for teams especially when you have large teams uh, distributed teams it's easy it becomes easy to enforce a certain structure and then get clarity in large applications what are some of the real world use cases of ngrx you can build a complex e-commerce app so you can manage cart wish list product state authentication orders payments cancellations all from one store that is ngrx store let's say you are building an admin dashboard with multiple data entities let's say users roles reports modules etc those can be used social media apps right uh, those can use ngrx like user feeds likes notifications recommendations and much more form heavy applications needing complex validation and auto saves now this uh, may s sound like a simplest thing that it's a form but when you talk about say insurance forms or banking forms they are huge and they are pretty complicated that's where uh, ngrx can really come into handy if you are building a mobile application or a progressive web app if you are doing a offline first architecture you can store the data in the local using ngrx that's another pretty handy use case in real world all right now let's talk about why not to use ngrx let's say ngrx like i mentioned will be helpful will be useful when you are working on a large uh, complex application with over distributed teams uh, feature teams etc but definitely it's an overkill for small apps do not add it just for the sake of it okay boilerplate heavy that means it requires multiple files okay especially namely the five that i talked about action reducers effects selectors and store these five files will be added for each uh, thing that you'll be working model <coughs> steep learning curve um, agree that you know some of these concepts are new uh, some of these concepts may sound complicated but again they are not but the learning curve will be there little steep but like i said i am here to help you master ngrx it gets harder uh, debugging without experience um, again if you are starting on your own maybe you'll find it little harder to debug to see what's going on but with uh, with my help and with my tutorials i'm sure you will learn how to debug faster slower development speed initially that's true very very true because you will notice how i will take you from zero to hero step by step once you reach there then it becomes easy but initially you will uh, need some time to practice to type to learn is it hard to learn ngrx uh, yes yes that's an honest answer initially yes uh, it requires a little bit of rxjs angular architecture and state management principles okay but just like any other thing it's easy to learn as well okay with proper guidance with proper step by step approach steeper than basic angular services or local component state you can pass data from one component to another using props input and easy but we are talking about massive scale here complex application that's where you have to learn ngrx okay there are some unfamiliar patterns uh, like uh, if you are coming from non reactive background you might find these patterns to be new but worry not i'm here to help you out you can improve with practice obviously once familiar with the data flow it becomes extremely powerful structured and that's why this tutorial series is to help you when to use and when to avoid ngrx use ngrx when the application has complex state shared across many components you need to undo redo time travel debugging or action logging you want a highly testable and scalable architecture when you are working with large remote teams and you need code consistency especially 
when you want to manage your async workflows like APIs, web sockets, etc. Avoid NGRX when you're building a simple app. Avoid NGRX if you can manage state easily using services. And if your team is extremely new to RxJS or state management and on time on tight on time and budget and money, skip NGRX. But again, like I said, it's in modern requirement in modern complex enterprise applications. So you need to learn. Thank you so much. I hope this clarifies and sets the ground and all the foundation for us to start coding. Drop me a comment if you need any more information. I'm here to help you. I'm here to master NGRX for you. In the next episode, I'll continue with the installation of Angular NGRX and will spin off a app. Thank you so much for joining. Please do like, share, subscribe these videos. That will be the only gift uh, you can give me. But if you want, you can also buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arctutorials. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.